it with the engine transmission, otherwise known as the drivetrain, back in place, I was able to rotate the power steering pump enough to get that new belt on down there. So it's loose. I need to tighten it by turning on that bolt end. And then there are two nuts that once the uh, power steering pump is in place, then uh, you need to tighten. Now, one thing I want to do before, uh, let's see if you can see down in there. There are slots in the pulley wheel. Let's see if I can get my finger down in there. There we go. That slot and another one opposite. Now, while the belt is still loose, I want to rotate that slot so that it is centered over top of this nut that otherwise, right there, otherwise is hidden behind it. So I'm going to do that before I tighten anything. Otherwise, I'd have to loosen it all and be able to rotate or rotate the whole engine. So either way, we'll, we'll do it right the first time. Here, reattach this ground strap here onto that lifting eye bolt where it came from. The next thing I'm going to do is reattach the power steering line right, sorry, right down there. And then the other one is right back underneath there. And that will then tie these two down. And that may be the last two things I have to do on what I'll call the front of the engine. Referring back to the list, what have we got? Starter, uh, drive shaft, stabilizer, clutch release, got that, got that, got that. Not sure what a manifold stay is. Let's find out what seven is. Seven is that bracket. I don't think I ever took that bracket out. I will have to look and see. And if I didn't, the next thing to go is we're going to start working on the uh, ends here. And we'll talk about that when I start working on it. First of all, let's make sure that manifold stay is in place. And I still can't find what they call the intake manifold support or something, the in manifold support. Um, some other issues is that I need to figure out by looking at my movies where the heck that came from. Did it come off of that? I don't think so because it's got that guy on it. Uh, this thing down here, I guessed, goes on top of there, but it could also, I believe something was off of here um, that might play into it there so I've got some some questions and the pictures in the manual eh, not so good at figuring out where some of these things go um, I mean I saw where was it over here this which I believe goes to, well, see it doesn't look right, it's, this is a front to back tube and that is the bracket for it. So I thought something went to one of the transmission. Um, so here's the, what I think we're talking about. And, so the question is, did it go around and back and behind? If that's, if that's the case, I don't know if it will clear this tube here, which definitely seems rock solid where it's at. Um, I know I had, oh, and then this P-clip. I don't know this point where that goes. Um, so it could be that this has to come loose so that I can push this behind. Maybe I've got enough play. All right, well, we're going to play with it some more. If Actually, no, you know, change my mind. We're going to leave these things and go back to work on putting the suspension together. My intent now is to get the weight back on the wheels so that I can measure the clearance and measure 
on the springs what the compression is so I can then determine how much of the spring to cut off to lower it around the inch, inch and a half that I'm searching for. So the ball joint is going to get replaced as is the link here for the sway bar. Um, so I'm just going to put some of these things back on enough to get the wheel in. lines are due for a replacement. Goody. One more thing to the list. Oh, thought I was done spending money. It was just in, in the install phase. Alright, so this is back. We'll move to the other side. The seal on the end of the transmission back in there has been lubricated. So I can there, get so the spindle knuckle. All right, so suspension put back together for the time being. Enough to lower it. I guess there are some things to reconnect under the car that I need to get to. The linkage for the transmission. We'll clean my hands and then refer back to the instructions. Back underneath the car, I've got a couple of pieces that need to be reattached. This bar here gets attached to a stud 
coming off of the side. Uh, bring it around the other side here. Yeah, maybe you can see it better. Okay, straight underneath, yeah. That stud sticking out there. Then this shifting rod gets attached to this end of the rod coming out of the transmission. The transmission is now currently in neutral. Uh, now at the other end, at this end of the shifter, uh, there is this bushing through here. See how loose that is? Not supposed to be loose at all. So I have a replacement part in there in, that I got. I don't think this gets anything. It comes with two pieces. I think the other end goes to the uh, connection to the transmission. We're going to replace this one first and then figure out where the other one goes after that. But no real feasible way to have you watched but anyway that's what I'll be doing now wrenches hammer punch many things were involved in getting this removed a lot of rust and crust anyway I've wire brushed all the loose stuff off got some rusty metal primer there I'm gonna pour some into a little tin and coat all that with some good rusty metal primer so here's what I ended up struggling with um, and these are part of my fixes. This used to be a very sharp edge and for whatever reason the bushings on either side of this uh, loop, whatever you want to call it, were not lining up so this shoulder was banging in and pushing out the other one. So putting a chamfer on here gives it a lead. The other thing I did was I ran a 3 8 diameter drill bit, which is what this screw is, through the pair of them when they're installed. All right, so now I will continue the fight. You are looking from the front towards the back. That is supposed to go around that but because I didn't check I can't get it past the catalytic converter so the next thing I have to do then is undo the other end which requires me to take the center console out which requires me to remove the seats which I was going to do anyway because I want to take carpet out So to remove the seats, there are those two bolts there, and then there'll be two bolts in the back that I can get to when the seat back is up and the seat is slid all the way forward. So let's take the seat out and see what we find. So in order to get access to those rear bolts, I'm going to remove these little plastic covers, which have those little clippy guys in them. Oh, we'll try getting those out both seats are out hiding in the back now to get the console out there are four screws one Phillips head there Phillips head there same thing on the opposite side I'll take those out next so at some point I'm going to figure out how to get this out um, but for now the screw that I need to access is right underneath there and I lift this plastic up or this rubber pad and there it is and I got the two on the other side off and so I'll get that one off and then there's another one up forward and then the shifter should drop out and I should be able to reattach the other end. So there's the shifter dropped away from the body. Now that will allow me 
to grab the bar. Right, well, let's shift it back and up there. Now that's where that needs to be. The washer goes on. So back under the car we are. As you can see, that is the shifter end. The shifter plate is loose to the tunnel portion inside the car. And the reason for that is, is that the distance that the shifter center is placed from the transmission at the other end is set by the one rod. That rod there. So it's a, so it's connected back there to the shifter. And then at the other end is a stud coming out of the transmission through which it is attached. Let's see, there's the rod coming through there. And that nut is on the end of that stud right now with a washer, so I'm going to loosen it. I've also gone ahead and attached the end of the shifter rod to the shifter uh, portion on the transmission. And that's probably also called a shifter rod. Anyway, I will tighten that nut, which will um, finish that connection at the front. Also, while I'm underneath there, I'm going to find and reinstall the reverse plug. Yeah, sorry for the focus. Uh, there's a reverse plug dangling around somewhere that needs to mate up to that reverse uh, plug mate to complete that circuit. So I will do that, and then that would allow me to go back inside the car and finish installing the washers and nuts that hold the shifter plate to the tunnel. All right, so I didn't have the light on when I did this, but anyway, that 2x6 wedged up against the bottom of the shifter plate is what held it up high enough for me to get the washers on and engage all four nuts. So now I can remove it. The shifter will sit where that bar is telling it to sit and then I can snug up those nuts. I have a 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench. can tell there's a lot less movement. I wish there was even less than that. There's another bushing, I guess, that I can think about. It's the easier one to get to right at the, the shifter rod. But fore and aft, it's a lot better. It's, yeah, it is what it is.